We're back with America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz, and all of you deer hunters out there are going to love what we've got for you next. Our next guest is John Sloan. He's been hunting deer for 63 years. He hails from the volunteer state of Tennessee. He's even got college degrees in animal science with an emphasis on wildlife biology, and he just wrote a great article in the Target Communications Outdoors Books newsletter that I received in my email inbox about Deer Hunter's Five Biggest Mistakes. John, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So, John, let's just run through these for our listeners, and we'll start off with mistake number one, failure to understand the animal you're hunting. Tell our listeners more about that. It's really pretty simple, John. If you're after a mature animal, uh, regardless of the breed, but especially white-tailed deer, and you haven't learned all you can about that animal, then you're making a big mistake. For If you pick any deer hunter out of the crowd and say, what is the deer's preferred food source right now? And he doesn't know. He hasn't been studying the animals enough. Uh, food is what makes deer move. It's the catalyst. Without food, you're not going to see the animal you're hunting. So you need to know what they're eating right now and what they're going to be eating a month from now as that food source changes. An animal feeding in a crop field all, all spring and summer long and suddenly the oaks start dropping acorns, he's going to shift his, his travel patterns. You need to be aware of that. You know, you need to know what's a deer eating. Why are they crossing a road or a stream right here? What's causing them to pick this spot to cross? How do you find those places, and then how do you hunt them? Uh, the questions and answers are endless. Uh, I've been messing with these deer for 60 years now, and there's not a time that I go to the woods that I don't see something that makes me say, what's up with that? Why did that happen? John, the the next mistake you've got is improper scouting. Everybody knows you need to scout ahead of the season to figure out where those deer are, but you've got an interesting take on this. Well, deer scouting, so many hunters uh, scout at the wrong time of the year and scout for the wrong thing. If your season opens in October and you do your scouting in September, a lot of times you're hurting yourself, not helping yourself. The real basis for scouting is postseason, in the wintertime, when Mother Nature has got the woods naked, and you can see what the land is doing, the terrain variations. You find the fresh rub lines that you didn't know were there. You make notes about them and make a note to have a stand hanging there for next year. Uh, Two days ago, I hunted a stand that I hung in July and have not seen since July and yesterday. I hung it for a specific purpose. I didn't kill the deer I was after, but sooner or later, if if I stay with it, I will. During the postseason, you find where the bucks are traveling on those trails that you so infrequently that there's not a trail there. So you've got to be able to see what the land's doing. Deer hate flat ground. They want some kind of variation. There's only four factors that influence everything a deer does. Food, cover, terrain, and structure. In the postseason, you can see those things, you can relate them, and you can pick out how a deer's going to travel before that deer has ever been there. In the preseason, maybe a month before the season opens, you're only looking for one thing, food source. What's happening? What are the oak trees doing? What's the herbaceous browse like? Where are the deer going to be feeding? Uh, And it takes uh, very little time in the woods, and it should be done as much as possible from long distance. You're listening to America Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We're talking to John Sloan. He wrote a great article in Target Communications Outdoors Books e-newsletter, called Deer Hunter's Five Biggest Mistakes. Let's talk about another mistake, and this has to do with scouting, and that's about we get patterned doing the patterning. Absolutely. The more time you spend in the woods, the easier it is for a mature buck to pattern you. Uh, When you get down from your stand and, and start walking around and looking one thing and another, you're really hurting yourself. Vary the trail that you come into your stand on. Try not to use the same trail all the time. Maybe even park in a different place. You'd be amazed how quickly a deer becomes attuned to odd motor sounds in the wrong place. So, you know, just kind of mix things up, do it differently, and I'm not sure that you can pattern a mature buck. You may think you can, but I've got my doubts about it. But I do know they can darn sure pattern you. I love it. Well, let's talk about another mistake, hunting at the wrong time of day. You know, if you know when a deer is moving, what time of day they're moving, 
what good does it do you to get out there four or five hours before that time and, uh, you know, let your scent disperse, and, and by the time the deer start moving, your fidgeting can't sit still. So even though you, you know when deer move, uh, the plain fact being they move whenever they want to, as a general rule, deer are no more active uh, right at daylight than they are at 1030 in the morning. In fact, on a lot of days, more mature deer are going to move between 10 and 2 than they are at any other time. And the hunter who can effectively hunt all day has a big advantage. But I don't know any hunters that can. It's, uh, you know, you talk about sitting out there in a blind or in a tree for eight or ten hours. How attentive are you during that time period? So if you're going to hunt all day, I suggest using two or three different stands. Move between them and keep yourself fresh. But the key to it is hunt when the deer are moving, not just when it's good daylight or just before dark in the afternoon. Don't forget that midday session. Last but not least, especially applicable to this day and age that we live in, an over-dependence on equipment and gadgets. This probably bothers me more than any of the, the mistakes uh, that I've listed. What we're seeing today is a generation of hunters who grew up watching stuff on television, and their whole knowledge of deer is where to put the feeder, what to put in the feeder, and how many trail cameras to hang. They don't know a thing about going in the woods and finding sign or recognizing a fence crossing or, or what a rub line means. If the deer don't come to their supplemental feeding and they don't have a picture of them on camera, as far as they're concerned, they don't exist. And to me, we're losing a whole generation of woodsmen because the, the skills required by our fathers and our grandfathers are being replaced by cameras and feeders. Folks, this is some of the best advice I have ever heard about deer hunting in the 10 plus years I've been doing outdoors radio. The man who just gave it to you, his name is John Sloan. He's been writing for a long time and you can find his articles, well, about twice a month in Target Communications Outdoor Books newsletter. Is there one thing I could add to that? Absolutely. Uh, I have the longest continuously running outdoor newspaper column in the United States. I'm about to start my 42nd year and folks can read that online at www.wilsonpost.com. That's wilsonpost.com. That's for the Wilson Post, the newspaper published in Lebanon, Tennessee. Check out that column by John Sloan. Check out that newsletter and get in the know about hunting and more. John, thanks for sharing this with us today on America Outdoors Radio. My pleasure. Thank you for calling.